The slope of a line is related to the angle or orientation of that line relative to a coordinate system. Slopes of lines are given values, and the value is usually assigned to the letter M. Now in order to see a common sense approach to knowing what the slope of a line is, I like to think about walking on a profile of Earth. And so, take the bottom one, for example. If this was green grass that the person is walking across, then they'd be walking across level ground. And when it comes to what's the slope of the ground that they're walking along, then we see that there's no change in elevation with each step in the positive x direction. And so, we would say that this ground has zero slope. And that's actually the slope of a line that's horizontal like that. Now we often want to think about ourselves walking in the positive x direction uh, when we're trying to conceptualize what a slope is. So let's take a look at this next steeper example. And this person will be walking up a gradual hill. It's not super steep. But it would be a little bit tough to walk up if you're going this way, and that's what we want to think about. Now we see that for this line, there's a small slope, and there's a gradual change in elevation with every step in the positive x direction. So instead of having a slope of 0, this uh, line here has a slope of 0 0.5, which is fairly small. It's somewhat close to 0. Um, but it is a positive slope. And all that means is that when we do go over to the right, this person's going to have to climb in elevation and go up. And so they go over and up, over and up. Okay, now what about uh, this line here? It's a lot steeper. Here, if I was trying to walk up that hill, I'd have, tough, I'd have a tough time. It's very steep, and we see that we'd have to have a large positive change in elevation with every step in the positive x direction. So the idea is the person goes over and they're going to have to go up quite a bit, quite a bit more than they did in this example down here. And we see that uh, the m value, the slope, is larger. It's 2 as opposed to 0 0.5. And so the steeper we go with our hill, the larger the m value becomes. Until we get to the most extreme example, which would be like uh, climbing a cliff. And in this case, it would be very difficult to walk on a slope like this. Uh, not just difficult, but impossible. Because remember, our goal is to go to the right. But in a situation like this, we can't go to the right and stay on the line. Okay, And for that reason, we're going to say that the M is undefined. A cliff has an undefined slope. And so a vertical line has an undefined slope. So these are just a couple things to remember. Uh, vertical lines have an undefined slope, whereas horizontal lines have a slope of 0. And that brings us to... One more case, and on this page we see that there's a slope which is fairly um, gradual. But this time, as we walk to the right, we notice that we're going to actually be going down in elevation. And so this is a downward or negative slope. Walking to the right causes the person to drop in elevation. And so our m value is going to be negative to reflect that. In this case, it's a negative 1 slope. All right, what we'd like to do now is find out how we actually calculate those m values. 
Uh, and there's a formula for it. And to calculate the slope m for a linear graph, we're going to want to find a rate of change using a graph's vertical change and its horizontal change. Direction matters when calculating slope. So sometimes the formula is written like this, m equals delta y over delta x. And in this form, uh, the delta y indicates a change in y. So just imagine our person here going from this position up to this position. The change in y is the change in elevation, whereas the change in x is the change in horizontal position. And we want to find out what exactly the numbers are that go with that. Okay, so to do it for this problem, uh, we're going to want to first put coordinates down for that first starting point. And it's going to be 1 comma 1. And then we want to put coordinates down for the ending point, which looks like 3 comma 5. And those are going to be the two points that we'll use to calculate our slope. You can actually pick any two points on the line to calculate the slope. Uh, these ones were just easy numbers to work with. Um, so let's, let's use those. All right, the other version of the formula says we want y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's going to be the most useful one here because we have our points in coordinate form. It's real easy to just plug in. So this is going to be our x1. And this one's going to be our y1. This can be our x2 and our y2. All we got to do is just plug them into their correct positions. So I'll just put like an open box here for y2, and there's an open box for y1. Here's an open box for x2, and an open box for x1. Four things, we just gotta plug them in. So uh, y2 is five. So let's put that in here. Uh, y1 is one. x2 is three, and x1 is one. Now we'll just simplify the top and bottom. So we're going to get 4 over 2, uh, which is 2. So the slope of this line is 2.